Welcome grade 12 to your second last topic of this term. We've moved through quite a few topics and we've left with two topics. This one is quite a easy one um, and it requires that you would need to understand it and study it. Okay, it's a topic that differentiates between management and leadership. We're going to look at the different aspects of it and um, you're going to split this video over in a few sessions. All right. So this video will summarize the whole topic and then you can revise it as per your term plan. So what you should be able to do, now there's three parts that we're going to discuss. The first one is what is management and leadership? You need to be able to define the management of leadership and um, as well as management and you have to distinguish the difference or differentiate um, between the management and leadership. Second topic is the different styles. You need to be able to um, outline, describe, name, differentiate, distinguish between. And we're doing democratic, autocratic, nice, fair or free reign, your charismatic and transactional um, leadership styles. And from that you have to identify the styles from specific scenarios or case studies and motivate your answers by quoting from the text. You have to discuss or evaluate or analyze the impact. This is your positives, your advantages or negatives or disadvantages of each style. And then you have to suggest or recommend situations in which each leadership style can be applied in the workplace. Okay, and last one is the theories. You have to be able to explain the following theories, which is, or the different theories of management leadership, which is the first one is leaders and followers, situational leadership, the transformation leadership and transitional leadership. And you need to be able to identify it from scenarios, explain the role of personal or success, of attitude in successful leadership, and then identify the personal attitude in successful leadership from scenarios. So you can see this is a very applicable one, applicable topic. And uh, when you know this, when you've studied it, you'll be able to see certain aspects in different classes and one day in your workplace you'll see how that has a massive influence on you as an employee all right so before we start off with the first one let's just quickly go through the notes or the the, um, the terms and definitions so i hope you're on the notes um, you can follow me that's on page three which is, uh, you can go through it on your own, leadership and management. So what's leadership? It's the ability of an individual or a group of individuals to influence. Um, management is the planning, organizing, leading and controlling um, employees to achieve a specific goal. Democratic leadership style is where the leader invites the team members or the group to contribute and participate in the decision making process this definition you can see from the word itself okay and study this because this will be how you differentiate it in the first place autocratic is the leader takes decisions on his own or own without consulting okay lies fair free reign the leader delegates the tasks okay so the one is free uh, there's everyone's part of the decision making the other one is only the leader makes the decision Fair reign is, uh, free reign is where the leader delegates tasks with no direction. Charismatic is he charms, he uses energy to influence them. His followers, transactional leadership focuses on motivating followers and by way of either reward or punishment. Then bureaucratic is where leaders make sure that employees follow certain rules and policies. Then you look at the theories, leaders and followers. A theory is where you focus on the relationship between the leader and the follower. Situational leadership theory is focused on the application of different leadership styles, depending on the situation and the maturity level of employees. Transformation leadership theory is the leader identifies the change needed and creates a vision to guide the change through inspiration. Personal attitude is the manner in which the leader relates to his or her employees and that determines the success or failure of the team. Alright, so let's jump in. 
So first you have to understand, you have to be able to um, give a definition of management and leadership. So management is, it's the coordination is four tasks that the leader has to do and it's a combination of that and that is planning, organizing, leading and control the employees. Why? You want to achieve a specific goal. Now you can become a manager because there's an open position and you need to be appointed. As you can see in the picture at the top, um, this was my interim picture. A manager is a boss, he is appointed, he sits at the desk, he tells people what to do. You can see the leader is in front. There's no desk, there's no sitting at the top. It's everyone works together. And then managers have power because of position of authority. And so we get to the differences in a manager and leader. A leader has got the ability um, to influence and guide his followers. Right, He's, he can inspire them to achieve goals. Uh, you cannot teach someone to be a leader, um, and although it may be learned as it's an inborn trait, there are certain leadership styles that you can teach yourself. Or I don't disagree with that, but the leadership it's a characteristic, and you have to develop that. You can't teach that. Okay, that's why it says you can't teach someone to be, you have to develop it. And that's why you're in this class, that's why you're in the school, and you are being developed as a leader, not being taught. Okay? It involves establishing a clear um, vision and sharing it with others. Why? If you have a clear vision that you can share, people know where you're going, and then if they know where you're going, they know if they want to join or not. Okay. Last one is a leader steps up in times of crisis and is able to think and act creatively. And this is now where you can see the difference. A manager will react, a leader will step up and he will be proactive or he will make a different plan instead of just shouting and creating more order. Okay, then you can see the key differences and um, you do not have to study all 20 of them. I would at least study six, six, six differences between the leaders and the manager. So and there's the first is the influence versus it guides the behavior, the communication by means of interaction versus communication through management functions like a line function. Remember, this is now the structure that we discussed earlier, earlier this in term one as well as in grade ten when you did the. Uh, uh, in micro environment, is that, that um, organizational structures? So that's just a way of communication. Um, it innovates or it encourages new ideas to increase productivity. Versus, it a uh, manager will administrate plans or programs or tasks. Okay, you can go through that, but I'll just study six on each side. So leadership styles, right? Well, there's five that we're going to discuss. So as you can see in this picture, the first three, democratic, autocrat, liar's fair, is on this type of an arrow. We're democratic in the middle, liar's fair is left hand side, there's free reign, you can do whatever, and authority is again other side, which means you are not to do anything on your own, the manager or leader does it all by himself. And then there's two other, it's the charismatic and transactional. So please note that uh, each leadership style's explanation is embedded in the advantages. Okay, so when you need to explain it, just um, I didn't copy all of the advantages into explanation slide as it's the same. So, when can you apply um, this leadership style? Okay, we already discussed the democratic leadership. Uh, this is where the leader invites the team members or the group to contribute ideas. So, when can you do this? is when you have skilled team members, right, that are, they're eager, they want to share their ideas, they know what they're talking about. Then uh, the leader, uh, he, in this case the leader does not have all the information, and then he needs the employees or his team to help to make a dis decision and then the, the members, the employees have valuable information to contribute. So if you are in management but you need to make a decision on specific products, 
it's normally our employees who work with it on a daily basis that will be able to uh, that will give you valuable information to make your decision do you continue with this brand or do you need another brand and uh, um, that's important okay that's why you want to uh, add them to this decision making process um, let's continue now in this you will need cooperation now cooperation means the, the, they have to work together and who's they? A team leader and the team need to work together. If you cannot work together, then this style will not work. Okay, remember this all answers when do you apply this. It's if there's cooperation. Last one, decision making. Okay, decisions need to be looked at from several perspectives and this is now the block at the bottom that you'll see. You need to look at the different problems from different angles and then your decision will be made based on the different answers that you get. Okay, so let's look at the advantages. Once your employees are empowered, right, they will want to participate in the decision making process. So they feel positive, they are empowered, they want to participate. But it comes when you uh, when they are allowed to participate. As you can see, this guy is psyched up. He's like, yeah. The next one is the staff um, gives a variety of ideas or inputs or feedbacks or viewpoints, and that can lead to your innovation. Okay, and that leads to increased sales most of the time. There's uh, the communication must be good. So if there's clear or two-way communication, that will ensure that the group is committed to a final or to the final decisions. If there's clear communication, people know what to do. They can be committed to the goal and work towards the goal. Um, then, well, in order to reach higher productivity, you need to delegate authority. Okay, so that will motivate workers and to be more productive. So if I say, okay, right, you're all now your own bosses, which you have been for the last 50 days of lockdown, uh, I give you authority over your own work, then I believe all of you will have uh, taken that to heart and you will work harder while you're your own boss. And normally when you're your own boss, you will drive yourself harder to make sure you get the work done. So that's why there's higher productivity. Um, and then uh, also complex decisions um, can be made with the inputs from specialists or skilled workers. Negatives, this can lead to sometimes incorrect decisions, why the staff may be inexperienced or not fully informed. It's also time consuming, your stakeholders have to be informed. Your leaders can rely too much on the input of the followers and then they can fail to make a final decision. So you, there's a failure to make a final decision. It's not effective in times of crisis or when you need a quick decision. And some employees only pretend to participate in decision making. Okay, they just want to sit there for the shine. And I hope it's not the, you um, listening to this message. And if it is you, you have still time to change it. Don't just be a sitter, be a participator. If there is such a word as that. Okay, autocratic. So when do you apply autocratic style? Remember autocratic style. If you look at the definition, autocratic means um, the leader takes decisions on his, he, uh, by, by himself. He doesn't consult anyone. So autocratic, this is applied in a crisis situation. For example, the crisis in a case of unforeseen challenges, accidents, or um, COVID, now a leader needs to apply this, right? If this was democratic and everyone had to vote, then no one would have voted for lockdown, okay? But the president took this leadership style, why? He needed to make a point in order to protect the country. Um, another form is when you have all the required information. You don't need someone else to help you make this decision. You've got all the info on your own. Uh, or when it's a crisis, um, already said that, when employees are motivated and the leader has already earned the trust of his followers, okay? 
So if your employees trust you, can be uh, they trust that you make the best decision, and that's when this style can work. Um, when dealing with employees or not cooperative, um, that can be a big one. So you need to have a firm hand, and then you don't want their inputs. You need to show them then who's boss in this sense. And when employees are not or new or not fully trained yet, then they will not have a meaningful um, opinion if I can say it if I put it respectfully if you are starting out on a new job and you've just been trained but you're so fresh I mean you still don't understand everything now you want to come and give the guy the, your manager who's been there probably for five to ten years advice on how to do his job or to do this job better that's very arrogant you need to first understand everything okay so remember when you have to apply this they'll give you certain of these elements in a case study and then you have to say okay in this case study i recognize it's a crisis the leaders got all the information and these workers trust him so we can apply the autocratic or in this case study we need to have autocratic because of the following reasons okay and this is how you're going to answer it so let's look at the advantages so for autocratic um, it's a quick decision right you can make this quickly you don't need to consult your followers or employees um, that means your work gets done right on schedule right on time um, the line of command or communication is clear that means everyone knows exactly what to do that's a big advantage so they can work that means high productivity and that means there's a high quality product or service why because there's direct supervision and strict control so when there's someone looking over your shoulder you'll have to work you don't ever say so there's a high quality product why they'll assess it and you'll have to redo it if it's not there um, it provides strong leadership and uh, which makes employees feel confident and safe if you know that someone is at the top that makes these tough calls you feel there's a safe framework for you you know that someone else is taking the difficult shots and you just need to do your job so it creates it confident uh, that you don't need to do that uh, it works well in companies that's big and you if you want to consult everyone it will be impossible i'm thinking of factories where they do um, assemblies for example at volkswagen where there's more than 2,000, 3,000, 4,000 workers. Now, if they have to consult every single one for their opinion on every single decision, uh, they will not make any decisions pretty soon. So there is some places where they do consult with the employees, but uh, normally it's through bargaining or workplace forums where they can air their opinions. All right let's look at and the last one is there's clear guidance on how on uh, low skilled or inexperienced staff okay what's the negatives leaders and followers can become divided and may not agree on ways to solve problems okay so it can lead to massive disagreements workers can become demotivated if their ideas are not used or not considered Okay, and that means lower productivity demotivated uh, workers also gives a, um, yeah, a lower quality of work so it's product not just productivity but quality then you can miss out on opportunities now what i mean with that is um, you don't you don't get new or creative or cost reducing ideas why because you're not um, thinking about that you just follow rules and when you follow rules that's one of the things remember normal thinking um, uh, normal versus out of the box what was the terminology you used I, this is a grade 11 question uh, first one to get it to me uh, i would like to see if you can remember that uh, we have um, um, the two differences we have normal thinking same um, day to day or out of the box I wanted the uh, headings or what you call that all right next there's uh, in this scenario uh, there's also a high uh, absenteeism or a high turnover why they feel they're not valued people don't want to ask their opinions so they want to leave 
Alright. This is the differences. We've already talked through that while I explained it. So again, you can just study um, what this is. Six. So you can study these six. I don't even think if you give two marks per fact, two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve, they will not be at a question out of 24 marks. I would say make sure you can list at least uh, for 12 or 14 marks. So that would be three four max all right now let's get to the next stage now this is um like is fair or the free reign leadership style so when can you use this this is when your subordinates are experts and they know what they want or that they can take responsibility for their actions so these are not your young immature staff these are the guys that's been doing it for years they know their stuff they're experts and they can take responsibility uh, so that means a leader is normally also very busy and then you'll need to delegate tasks to in order in order to get it all done and to increase productivity but when you delegate tasks you delegate authority and that means they really uh, can roam with it okay team members need them to improve or develop their leadership skills and it's also suitable when employees are highly experienced and know more about the task than the leader. Now, this comes from years of doing this. All right. Again, if you're the first day on the work, you're, you're not going to give um, that guy the chance to speak why he needs to learn the ropes first. So what's the positives of this leadership style? So the workers okay, can make their own decisions on their own work or methods. Uh, subordinates that's now the workers have maximum freedom and they can work independently the leader motivates the workers why he trust them and that means he empowers the, the competent workers and that leads to increased productivity okay just by trusting them subordinates are experts and they know what they want they take responsibility for their um, actions he said that it's suitable for coaching to uh, or mentoring to motivate employees to achieve better things and uh, uh, subordinates are experts suitable for coaching and it empowers uh, competent followers all right negatives now in this free reign if if the many if the leader just gives free reign to everyone to do what they want if there's um, if it's not in the right scenario it can lead to the following disadvantages uh, that means everyone will go it's like horses running wild without direction so every guy will go his own way and no one will know what to do no one will achieve a, a team goal everyone will just run their own agendas and try to be boss okay so there's no direction there's no leadership and it leads to team motivation that leads to disagreements that leads to fights another thing is when you're held responsible for your own work it can lead to uh, underperformance now few people want to be old held responsible why they they don't want they want to have a quick exit no it's not my fault um, the you know the victim mentality like i showed you on that video but when you are held responsible, that can people are they normally um, underperform? Why? They don't want to give uh, uh, themselves any room for uh, to fail too much, so they just render the little, the basic minimum. They don't want to do more in and fear to fail, uh, fa fear of failure. Okay, I said it can lead to conflict. Um, because you need to solve your own conflict situations productivity will be compromised if there's not tight control if you don't meet your deadlines and productivity might be slow okay charismatic leadership style a new one now this what was that if we have to define it this is where the, the leader inspires with his charm, he's got energy and he influences his team by way of that. So this is a short one, you'll see there's a lot of similarities. This leader will sell and achieve his vision um, 
and you'll get excellent results. Why he's able to sell his vision? He's got the vision, but he sells it with such passion and enigma that everyone jumps on board. He just gets it right. It's like Rassi Erasmus with the World Cup. I don't know how he motivated the guys, but somehow in that half-time break, he did something that turned the team into... Um, they didn't let down, and they played incredible rugby. So, in any case, um, it will motivate... Uh, that lead, this leader will motivate employees as the leader is energetic, is inspiring, and he will inspire loyalty or hard work amongst the employees. Okay, so he's like a DJ. Now he's the energy is pumping. When you're around that person, you just want to work. And sometimes those people are really tiring because they've got so much energy. Not sure if you know of anyone that uh, that that leads in this way. Okay, positives. Uh, they are experts at selling. They are motivating. Uh, why? Because they are self-energetic, they are inspiring, and they inspire loyalty. As you can see, this is exactly the same. Why? These uh, these uh, elements is the same. So it's in the situation, but this is the advantages as well. The disadvantages: the leader believes more in himself than in his team, so he will rarely trust. He will do it himself. But he'll inspire others, but then he'll probably want to do it over again. Projects can, can collapse um, if the leader leaves a team. Why? He's such a motivation, energizing um, factor that if he leaves, all of that falls flat. It's like when you drink Coke and you need the energy and then there's the spike. But if you don't refill, then there's this downward spiral and there's no system sustaining energy which means everything collapses then leaders are intolerant of challenges and they regard themselves of errors irreplaceable and that's a terrible thing to ever think of yourself that you're irreplaceable you can work hard to become but always remember there's always someone better okay the next one transactional leadership style so when can you apply this you can apply this style when the business wants to maximize their employee performance all when the deadlines have to be met on short notice now again this can be like autocratic in a way but um, you'll see the difference now it's when workers have a low morale um, and when the strategies do not have to change and when productivity levels are very low it's not according to the targets and this is when you can uh, do a transactional leadership style. So what is this transactional? We said it's where the leader focuses on motivating him followers through a system of reward and punishment. So it sounds like autocratic, but now this this is where it's different. He will tell them, right, um, I can see there's something not going on. So transactional means this for that. If you do good, you will receive reward. If you don't, you will receive a punishment. So what's the positives if I do it this way? The rewards. Anyone that I, everyone that I know loves working hard because they know that they'll get the reward. You are working hard because your reward is you'll be passing the trick hopefully with a distinction or with 70 or 60 or 50 percent with university clearance um, or acceptance. And this is your reward. Some parents like to reward their children with other um, incentives, but you work for that reward. Okay, it improves your productivity and your morale. Um, the goals and objectives of the business can be achieved as the workers are motivated, employees know what is expected of them, and the disciplinary action procedures are well communicated. That means everyone knows what will happen if you don't achieve it now what's the negativities if you don't um, if they don't um, achieve it or um, if they just have to follow if they have to follow strict rules and procedures they'll get bored and they'll lose their creativity okay that's a very um, 
uh, important fact to remember if there's only if there's no there must be some freedom for creativity creativity will not flourish in a strict rule environment a transactional leader he will have to monitor the workplace um, environment and he needs to ensure that everyone's or that the expectations or that the targets that set is met he will be managing uh, employees and that means he's got less time to focus on his work so it's time consuming okay, it's called like micromanagement now unmotivated um, employees uh, th this means if if I don't achieve it uh, I know there's a punishment coming and that means um, I'm, I'm so unmotivated or demoralized because I've been working hard but I'm not achieving this target I'm not meeting this goal so it's a terrible you know it's it's I think sometimes you feel like this so you work hard but the work doesn't stop so you feel unmotivated but you just have to push through okay it's not suitable for teamwork as all team members can be punished for poor performance caused by one team member now this is important if you are working in a team and you know that there's a, a million rand prize at the end of the year for the best team project if you don't get that that's quite demoralizing and you will not want to be in the same team in the next year why because of the reward that you missed out on and that can that's bad for a team for any team dynamic okay so let's start with leadership theories and there's four leadership theories it's the situational leadership it's transformational it's leaders and followers and, and uh, transitional leadership so situational leadership okay there is different leadership characteristics that's needed for different situations okay so this means the task or situation will dictate the style that should be applied so leaders are adapt flexible so uh, you will remember from my classes sometimes i'm strict uh, um, and i follow the autocratic and there's no option sometimes there's uh, interaction sometimes you get the option so there's different styles that i can apply okay and the leader has to see which situation you will need to apply which um, style effective application will enable leaders to accomplish their goals okay that's always your goal you need to accomplish a goal the relationship between leaders and employees are based on trust and that will lead to respect loyalty integrity and honesty okay it's always trust first and it's not one side it's mutual okay leaders then have the ability to analyze situation to get the most suitable people in the right positions to complete the task successfully leaders can analyze group members objectives or time constraints and adapt to a suitable relevant leadership style so you can see if this style doesn't work and if the deadlines are too tight they can adapt the new style in order to meet the deadlines or to reach objectives they this can also lead to conflict when leaders use different leadership styles when managing employees in different situations this might feel like you know um, this guy is not the same today and tomorrow and you can't pitch him but one day he's um, in such a foul mood or he's so strict and the next day he's friendliest guy full of energy and the next day he's not there he's delegating his authority so it can cause conflict even in between different uh, members because it can feel like there's some favoritism and it's all because of the interpretation of the employee of the different leadership style not necessarily on the actions of the leader now the success of the theory depends on the kind of relationship that the leader and his team members have okay so it's always based on relationship if there's no relationship you will not inspire or have any followers this is your most important part as a team leader you need to build a good relationship now let's go with transformational now just a quick note the transitional lead theory has been left out on purpose as it's covered um, by the transformational theory as both speak to change all right so you can do a bit of um, um, summarizing work in your textbooks on transitional theory all right 
transformational theory. Let's get that going. And this is suitable for a dynamic environment. That means there's change anytime. Change can be drastic and it can occur at any time. Dynamic means it's constantly changing. So this passion, this vision, personality of the leaders, they will inspire their followers to change their expectations in order to work to achieve a common goal. Okay, so they want to transform this. So a strategic thinking leaders, leaders will develop a long-term vision for the organization and then sell it, right? You will start with where are we heading? Everyone needs to buy into where are we going? The leaders will then have uh, the trust or respect of the following of their followers or subordinates. Um, and this promotes intellectual stimulation and creative thinking, which results in the growth or development or success of the business. Okay. And it encourages followers to explore new things, try new or to get new opportunities. You can share their ideas freely. Um, leaders lead by example and make work interesting, uh, interested in their work. They make it interesting for their workers to see and to do it the same way. They have a strong charismatic personality and they're very good at motivating staff. And they enable employees to take greater ownership for their work, to know their strengths and weaknesses. So, now you have to understand the difference between leader and follower. Teams will only achieve great success okay, or great results when there's an understanding between the leader and the team followers. And everyone needs to understand their role. Not everyone can be the leader of the group. Everyone wants to be the leader. Why? They normally make the decision, but we've just saw that there's different leadership styles. So it's not necessarily true in all situations. So everyone must understand who is who, what's the role. Followers will listen to what is expected of them and they need to be willing to work as a team. Followers can accept responsibility when something doesn't work out and they need to accept it. Leaders will have to lead by example and reward positive behavior. Leaders will motivate employees to devise alternative strategies to find more efficient ways to use the available resources. And followers might just trail along depending on the leaders and other followers to pull them through the task. So that's quite important. Now, I want you to think of if uh, you sometimes think that the leader is just having a ball, you know, he's delegating the work, but he's where the, uh, he has to present that to management and it's his head on the chopping block, not the teams necessarily. So he's got a different viewpoint. He is the guy that spreads his wing, that covers his team from the, the, the punishment that he gets from management for underperforming work and then he needs to convey that message but still motivate the team. So therefore you need a strong person who can be that lead, that link between management and the team. Okay. Last one, last slide. The role of personal attitude. Now why do you need, uh, what type of attitude do you need to be successful in leadership? You need to be positive. Why? It will release leadership potential. It all starts if, if you're positive. If you're positive, it means you can influence. If you're negative, that's how you will be influencing people. And you don't want to have, have negative people. You don't want to influence people negatively. So a leader's good or bad attitude will influence the success or failure of the business. A leader must know their strengths and weaknesses to apply their leadership styles effectively. So I cannot lead. Uh, in a way that Mr. Young leads. Why? I've got different qualities, different strengths, and I need to work on mine. A great leader will understand that the right attitude will set the right atmosphere. Um, a leader's attitude may influence employees, their, their thoughts and their behavior, so you must be careful about how you influence them. Leaders should model the behavior they want to see, so it's not, it's, um, Look at what I'm doing and do the same. It's not look or uh, do what I say. Uh, successful leaders will consider the abilities or the skills of team members to allocate tasks. So I will make sure that the person I give the task to will be able to do it and not just hand it out to any random person. Why? I want to get it done and get it done right the first time. Enthusiasm produces confidence in the leader. 
A positive attitude is critical for good leadership. Why? Good leaders will stay with the task regardless of difficulties. That's why you need a positive attitude. Also mm. commitment. Successful the employees and leaders have a constant desire to work together and achieve success. And lastly, leaders with a positive attitude know that there is always more to learn and there's always space to grow. So you need to be able to explain these and identify it from scenarios. All right. So this is leadership and management. You can start with informal activities and complete it in the next period as well.